This is case of the week number nine, pulmonary infarction. I'm Dr. Dan Kobo from Radiologist HQ. Let's take a look at the case and then I'll highlight some key points at the end. So let's start with a chest x-ray. This is a male patient in his 50s who presented with chest pain and shortness of breath. In the right mid lung, there's this patchy consolidative opacity, but we have an intact right cardiac silhouette telling us it's probably not located within the right middle lobe. We also have an intact right diaphragmatic silhouette, so it's not in the basal or right lower lobe. So where is it? So let's look at the lateral view. Here you can faintly see the oblique fissures, the major fissures extending across the chest, indicating that this is all lower lobe here. The minor fissure faintly extends across in this direction, so this would all be right middle lobe and lingula superimposed over each other, and then this would be upper lobe up here. So that tells you that this consolidation is in the superior segment of the right lower lobe. Notice that it's plural base. It's extending to the periphery, and it's wedge shaped here, and we also don't see any air bronchograms within it. Now, if I also tell you this patient has a history of lower extremity deep vein thrombosis, then you'd be worried about pulmonary infarction. Looking at the patient's CT chest with lung windows, we again see that wedge-shaped consolidative opacity in the peripheral right lung. So where is it? Well, here's the bronchus intermedius. And as I scroll inferiorly, we're moving into the right lower lobe bronchus. And then there's the superior segmental branch of that bronchus leading right to the consolidation. So that tells you that we're in the superior segment right lower lobe, which is what we suspected on the chest x-ray. You can also see the right middle lobe bronchus coming across here, and that has medial and lateral segmental branches. All right, now turning back to this peripheral consolidation, you can see it's in the classic location for an infarct, but also it has some bubbly lucencies within the central aspect of it, which is typical. Now look at the surrounding lung bilaterally. We see areas of dark and also light lung giving a mosaic attenuation appearance. And if you look even more closely, notice that in the dark areas, the vessels are smaller in size than in the light areas. So that tells you that we're dealing with mosaic perfusion. And that's a nonspecific finding. You can see that with gas trapping, but you can also see it in the setting of pulmonary embolism, which is what we have here. So now we're looking at soft tissue windows. There's the main pulmonary artery leading into the right pulmonary artery, and we have a thrombus in the distal aspect. There's the ascending and descending thoracic aorta just for reference points. Now keep an eye on this thrombus as I move inferiorly. It's extending into the right lower lobe, so it has a lobar component, and then also into segmental branches here. And that's leading right to the apex of this infarct. And you can also see that the vessels branching off of it are dilated and thrombosed. As we move in fairly further, there are additional subsegmental branches right here, occluded and again leading to the apex of this wedge shaped peripheral consolidation here. So that's classic for pulmonary infarction. That's the vessel sign that I'll talk about in a minute. Now, the fact that this is wedge shaped and peripheral is a clue that it's an infarct, but there is a more specific finding, and that's these bubbly lucencies that we see within the consolidation. Notice how they're not branching gas filled lucencies that we'd expect with an air bronchogram, as you'd see with pneumonia. These are more cystic scattered areas within the central aspect of this pulmonary infarction. You probably notice that there are a few additional scattered segmental basal or pulmonary emboli within the right lower lobe. So let's talk about a few key points for pulmonary infarction. So this is an uncommon complication of pulmonary embolism. We only see it in about 15% of patients with emboli. Interestingly, it's more common in the right lung, but we don't really know why. It's similar to how the hemangioma tends to occur more commonly in the right hepatic lobe than the left. One of the many mysteries of the right side of the human body. <laughs> But the risk of infarction will increase with larger clot burdens. So when you have really extensive pulmonary emboli, you're more likely to see infarcts. There are some classic imaging findings. So typically these will be wedge-shaped peripheral consolidations that lack air bronchograms, known as the fabled Hampton hump on chest x-ray. <laughs> but it's important to note that these might not be wedge-shaped. They may be ill-defined or even patchy and rounded. And even more importantly, not all wedge-shaped opacities will be infarcts in the setting of pulmonary embolism. Commonly, you might just have atelectasis or pneumonia. So you don't want to overcall all these opacities as infarcts. There are a few key findings to look for. One is the presence of a bubbly appearance of the consolidation containing these rounded central lucencies. And that's been found to actually be the most specific finding of infarct. It's due to a combination of infarcted necrotic lung and adjacent viable aerated lung at the level of the pulmonary lobule. You might also see the vessel sign as we saw in this case where you have an enlarged vessel or vessels leading to the apex of a wedge-shaped opacity. And that's due to the presence of intraluminal thrombus that's dilating the vessel or the vessel might be dilated because there's distal obstruction at the level of the infarct. So those are some useful findings you can look for. Hey, thanks for watching Case of the Week, Pulmonary Infarction. You can catch these lectures each week by subscribing to our podcast, YouTube channel, or by following on social media. Until next time, remember, radiology is life.